Hey y'all, so today we're talking about Unity's Graph Toolkit. And the main reason that I wanted to make this video is that I've seen a really good tutorial out there from Unity on what is Blackboard, what's the interface, how do you work with nodes, etc. But I've not seen any great videos on why would you want to use this tool yet, or who is this tool meant for? So I wanted to make this video, show you how to get in and actually start using the Graph Toolkit if you want to explain who really is going to get the most uh, juice for the squeeze in learning this tool and kind of its intention. We'll also look at one of the samples here that you see in the bottom of the screen. So the first thing is, what is this tool and why is it useful um, and kind of who's going to get the most out of it? So this is a complex tool and that's part of the reason that I don't think there's a clear why use this video out there is because theoretically, the Graph Toolkit is a framework that you can build on top of to create any types of tooling for the editor that you would like. So it's a little bit convoluted in that you could effectively use this system and build your own shader graph or build your own VFX graph or build your own new animation system. Anything that deploys nodes and logic through scripting um, that you would effectively want to turn over to maybe a designer and allow them to use that node-based slotting of logic to customize a workflow is something that this could be used for. So the sample that I'm gonna run through in a bit here that comes with this package allows you to take two colors on the front end and then uh, take an average of the two, push those out into a texture node and have that all ingested as a custom import. So it's not a standard dot asset file. It's actually a, a dot text maker file. So very niche use cases in that regard. But one really cool example that will come out of this with might be, uh, let's say I want to automatically pack textures into the RGBA channel and make my own mask map from a series of four texture inputs through a button click. I could make that system using this. So the idea is if you want to make tools and you want to make workflows that work within the editor, this is a great way to build those and ensure that they're all going to adhere to Unity's UI and UX disciplines in all the naming conventions, the deployment methodologies, so that you're not going to unintentionally be building a tool that will eventually not work properly within the engine. Because a lot of what is working in Unity Editor is built on top of either this exact system or something very comparable, it seems. So if you want to follow along, the easiest way to get in here and just start exploring is gonna to be to install the package. And to do that, you're gonna go up into Window, Package Management, Package Manager. I already have Graph Toolkit, but if you do not, you're gonna to go to Install Package by Name. And here you're going to type in com.unity dot graph toolkit. So give that a try, hit install, and it will pull in all of this package. You'll see you can get into the normal um, tabs of version history dependencies, as well as samples. So I've installed both of these samples, and uh, perhaps to give a good illustration of what each one is, I'll just pull up the documentation, which I will be sure to list in the description below. The main one that I want to spend the most time on is the texture maker sample, because that's something that I think I would find useful as a, an artist that could come in here and customize the way that different textures or custom imported assets will be handled. The other one is really interesting as it is a kind of a novel director sample, like a visual novel, storybook, storyline. And the idea being that at runtime, you can actually use the same type of tool um, to influence runtime behavior. So you can actually drag these nodes through a narrative and what order that's going to play in, and it will impact a runtime, which is really cool. So the first thing that I'll say before we dive into the Texture Maker sample, where we'll spend our time here today, is that Graph Toolkit is extremely useful to someone like me that is not a programmer, but is a designer, an artist, etc., that can kind of customize this node-based tool later on. But it's not something that I can use myself. What would typically need to happen is that I would want to work with a programmer 
And that programmer will come in and make the graph that I will eventually interact with as the designer or the artist. But the graph must be made by someone that fully understands programming. Uh, every node that you see in any of our samples is scripted. It, it has to be created from scratch, more or less. My hope would be that there's an eventual library that can be created so you can just pull nodes in. But the, the intention of the toolkit is not in itself to be a, a quote unquote product. It's meant to be a tool to create tools with, if that makes sense. So if we come back up here and we go into, let's say, get started with tool graph, the very first thing that it shows you is that you're getting into scripting. So you, you must understand how to create different nodes through script so that others can interact with those nodes that don't need to have as close an understanding of how the scripting works. So when we get in here and we start playing with my first texture graph, every node that we are looking at here has been scripted. So if I come out into project, I've installed the package and I've installed the samples of both the texture maker and the visual novel director. If I go into the texture maker and I create a new asset as I have here, all of the nodes that it is going to be referencing are all going to be in here. So if I click on these nodes, each one of these is pretty beefy and is doing something different. So when it says create texture node, it's not just a node that exists. It has been made for me in this sample. I just want to be upfront with that. Otherwise, this tool can get very complicated and frustrating for an end user if you're not expecting to get in here and start doing a lot of scripting. Um, for example, when it takes a mean of the color, it takes an average. It's doing all of this math that has been set up. So let's go ahead and dive back out here and take a closer look at this sample and see how we want this to... Uh, all work. So I'm going to slide this back over to the right. The first thing that we want to do is come up here and go into assets, create graph toolkit samples, and then I'm going to do the texture maker graph, but please feel free to explore the other sample as well. In creating this, because the instructions tell you to call it my first texture graph, I'm calling this my second texture graph because that is what I've made. When I double click that, it opens up this graph for me. And from within the graph, you can see it's, it's a pretty standard workflow. You've got your blackboard on the left that allows you to create new types of data, but realize that there's really nothing in here other than color and texture 2D because that is how this, this specific texture graph asset has been written. Uh, if you want, you can add in a bunch more types that you can uh, can work from, and you can start working with things like floats. However, because this texture graph has not been scripted to work with floats, it picks up nothing whenever I click on that. When I hit plus, it just adds a variable that reflects whatever the last variable is that I used, um, or just picks a default. So here's a color, and here's a texture 2D. So some interesting stuff there. So now let's go ahead and create some nodes based on what we have access to. So if I right click out here in the main area, I can see that I have color constant, 2D texture constant. I also have nodes. So I can do a texture node, a mean color node, and a uniform node. So the way that this one works, and if you follow along the documentation, you'll see the same thing, is that I'm going to do a mean which means I'm averaging between two different input textures. And I'm going to say create texture node from that. So now that we know that we want to take an average of the input and make that new texture, I can come over here and create another new node, which is going to be a uniform node. So this uniform node effectively will take a color and it will output a texture from that color. So if I want, I could then have my new variable up here, which could be, let's just say red, input into uniform node, which then outputs a texture. That texture is then averaged 
which then outputs into creating the texture node. I can then do the same thing over here. So if I want, I can come over here and do a uniform node. And then I can come over here, drag new variable one out. And I'm just showing a few different ways to work with the system. And now over here, I can change this to blue. So ideally what we should see is purple coming out on the other end. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna go back into the project and we're going to see that we have a purple looking texture. So if I duplicate this sphere and pull it right over here and I drag this item out, it will overtake that with a purple texture, which is the mean of our blue and red. So why is this significant? This is significant because when I right click and hit show in Explorer, we can then see that this is not an asset. This is a custom imported file and it's an important distinction because this means that we are working with a new file type that we have now specified. This opens up a lot of flexibility um, and allows you to import uh, files that perhaps the engine does not natively want to accept or understand. And now you have a framework to start doing that. So it's not to say that this sample is going to be on the path of what you want to create with your graph toolkit in your project, but it's a great example and at least starts to show you how the nodes will work. So I would certainly encourage you to come in here, start to play around with all of this, look at the documentation, and specifically better understand how all of this is written. So start to look at how the nodes work, reference that documentation, start to create your own. But again, this is a tool that I would pair myself with a programmer. If you are a 3D artist, I truly don't think this tool has utility for you. If you're a programmer and you typically are making uh, like state machines that you want to be able to customize the order of states and how things are influenced even at a runtime, um, this might be a great tool that you should start digging into. So we'll keep it here for today. Hopefully this gives you some more info on what Unity's graph toolkit is. You do have to be in 6.2 or newer to use it. Get on in there, check it out and let me know what you think. If y'all are already planning some really cool stuff, I would love to hear about it in the comments below. With that said, I hope y'all are having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.